I started working with One Young World in 2018 um, and I think the thing that I found most inspiring and enjoyed most about my experience with One Young World is really working with the student led organising committee. I attended my first summit in Manchester last year in 2022 and um, you know you hear all this amazing stuff around the office you hear how it's going to be amazing it's going to be this awe-inspiring event and you know you really can't see that until you've been there and I think once I attended that event and saw like the amazing moving speeches Q&A panels sessions and just met so many people, met like so many of these like impactful change makers who are really, really um, changing the world. And a, and a lot of them like Meg here today, like she credited One Young World with the beginning of her story. What I really like about One Young World is that it provides a platform for young people. Uh, so as young people are the most impacted by the topics that are discussed, whether it's climate change, education, um, sustainability, um, but yet they do not have the necessary platform uh, when it comes to decision making, policy making and actually like implementing the solutions for those problems that affect them in the first place. I think sometimes as students we don't feel as empowered to kind of when you're reading about like world news and things like that, you kind of feel quite disconnected. And I think this is one way to connect young people, students to what is going on in the world and essentially kind of inspire you to think about the future, think about how you can do things right now. You know, the kind of message that you want to convey at One Young World is, is, is not a very explicit message. What you're trying to do is to create, or at least what I'm trying to do, is create an advocacy and the only way that you can create that movement is a person at a time so if you come and talk to smart young people that subsequently advocate the use of electric cars or hydrogen cars or e-fuel cars in their future because they because they've listened because they've understood and they understand that it's important and that within their friends group, within their peer group, and as they get become more and more important as they go into their careers, they can influence a, a hundreds of thousands of people themselves. So, you know, every oak tree starts with a seed. And what I'm hoping in, in talking to a forum like this is I can plant a few seeds of hope with, with young people that will take that forward and change the world. Panelists today mentioned uh, they're here to teach us their mistakes so we can learn and act on them in the future. I encourage your voice, you dial up your voice. You make sure that your voice is heard and you're steady in that and you're confident in your voice because nobody has your experience and perspective. But for people like me who are two or three decades older than you, it's not enough for us to say we want to hear your voice. It's genuinely the world we're in now, you have the power. We need to hear from you and not just hear from you, make space for you. The best thing people in my position can do is I'm just going to get out of the way and leave it to you. And so you may not have as many years on the planet as I have or as much experience as my age has, but you do have an insight that we don't have. And if we truly believe in inclusion and equality and equity, that truly means we have to stop ageism on both sides. You're too old to have relevance and you're too young to have relevance. That's, that's not inclusion.